ready for an overflow today. Yeah. If so, let us all welcome our feast builder, Brother Ahu Gogna. Morning. Morning. We are overflowing here today. Tignan nyo nga yung mga katabi ninyo. Mukhang punong-puno na ano? Punong-puno ang kanyang tumataba pa. Ano? How many of you are ready for an overflow? Can you tap as many people as you can? Tell them, get ready for an overflow. For two weeks now, especially in Visayas, they had an earthquake scare. Alam niyo yun? Nababa, nababa, napapanood niyo? Nababalitaan niyo? Kasi nga, grabe yung lindol na nangyari sa kanila. Kasi may mga kaibigan ako from Cebu. They are telling me na ano na sila, if I may use the word, napapraning na ng konti. Kasi biglang mag-aftershock. Tapos minsan, nagkukwentuhan lang sila while eating. Biglang sabi ng isang kaibigan ko, may lindol ba? Sabi niyo, bakit? Ba- Pakiramdaman niyo. Yung pala may nagkukuyakoy lang na isang tao. No? No? Yung, yung napaparaning na sila, konting kilos lang. Sino sa inyong nagkaroon ng earthquake sa buhay niya this past few weeks? Nilindo lang buhay mo. No? For those who do not know, ako'y nilindo lang aking buhay. Hindi alam nung iba na we weren't able to go to our pilgrimage because we lost our baby. Lumindo lang buhay namin. But let me tell you another earthquake story in the Bible. This is an earthquake that freed the apostles, the disciples of Jesus. This is in Acts of the Apostles. The story is about Paul and Silas. Si Paul and Silas, they were preaching the Word of God. Tapos nagalit sa kanila yung mga tao, hinuli sila, ikinulong, kinandado ang kulungan, nilagyan pa sila ng mga posas. Tapos habang nakakulong sila, you know, they started singing songs to the Lord. Kanta lang sila ng kanta. And then after a while, the earth shook. There was an earthquake. And because of that earthquake, it freed them. Sila'y nakalaya. Natanggal yung shackles, bubukas yung, yung pintuan ng bilangguan. And they were able to get out. But they didn't do that. They went back and preach the gospel to the, to the prison guards, and it converted them. But the story is about the earthquake. Lahil lumindol, ito'y nagpalaya sa kanilang buhay. Iniisip-isip ko yan, we've been telling this story when I was still in, uh, when I was teenager. Ang, ang ganda ng mga kwento dito, sabi nila, kaya daw lumindol. The heaven is the throne of God. Yes? The earth is His footstool. Nakaupo ang Diyos sa trono ng langit. Ang inaapakan niya ay ang mundo natin. Kaya nung nagkakantahan si Paul and Silas, All your promises won't let go of me. Oh, si, si, si Lord gumaganyan din. No? Habang ginaganon niya yung paa niya, lumindol dito. No? And it freed them. Brothers and sisters, if you are in the earthquake, the storm of your life, do not stop worshipping your God. Never stop. Because they keep on worshipping their God. The earth shook because God was pleased and they were free. Kung kayo nililindol ng buhay ngayon, huwag kayong tumigil magpuri sa Panginoon. Amen? And that is what you have done. Worship. Alam ko yung iba sa inyo, kahit umiiyak na, nakataas pa rin ang kamay. Bakit? Lord, ang bigat ang problema ko, pero pinupuri kita. And as you continue your feast today, this will be your worship to God. At humanda kayo sa lindol na darating sa buhay niyo na magpapalaya sa inyong tunay. Let's come before our God in prayer. Let us pray our favorite prayer here at the feast together. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. 
Today I open myself to God's word so I would become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let us read together from Luke chapter 6, verse 48 to 49. Together, please. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house, but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Three things about the Word of God. First is this, building a house is not done overnight. Do you agree? Meron ba sa inyo nagpagawa ng bahay na bukas gawa na? Depende kung ang bahay niyo ay maliit o kaya dog house, kaya yon. But if you want to build a strong house, it will not take overnight. Some, sometimes it takes several months or years to build a solid house. It is the same with our spiritual life. It is the same with our financial life. It is the same with our relationships. Hindi kaya overnight. You have to... It, it will take time to mature. That is why we really encourage you to come here at the feast not once in a while, but come here regularly so that you will have a solid foundation. Tingnan nyo nga mga katabi ninyo, sabihin nyo nga sa kanila, come regularly. Come regularly. This should be a weekly thing for you. This should be a Sunday habit for you and your family. So that you will build a strong foundation sa buhay. Kaya pag ikaw ay palagi nakakarinig ng salita ng Diyos, makikita mo kahit anong lindol ang buhay dumating sa'yo, nakatayo ka pa rin. Bakit? If that, this is God's word. It should be built solid foundation. And if you're here, may I suggest that you really focus on the Lord. Kasi pwede kang nandito tapos ang daming distraction, katulad ng ano, pag upo mo dyan, biglang umilaw yung mga ilaw na yan. Uy, may ilaw. May gumagalaw. Ano kaya yun? Diba? Pwede ganun. O kaya, pagka nandito ka, biglang may dumaan ng magandang chicks. Wow, chicks. You, you can be distracted. But brothers and sisters, solid foundation is what? Focusing on Jesus. Second point about the passage is this. It says there, who digs deep, malalim. You do not work hard if you just dig shallow. Digging deep means you really work hard for it. Pinagihirapan. Kasama ang financial life. Kasama ang spiritual life. Kasama ang relationship, your career, your business. Kailangan pinagihirapan. Tingnan nyo nga yung katabi nyo. Mukhang hirap na hirap na ba? <laughs> Alam niyo, pag hirap na hirap na yan, malapit na ang tagumpay. Malapit na ang tagumpay. Alam ng mga nanay yan, na nanganak, mga nanay, di ba? Pag hirap na hirap na kayo, malapit na ang tagumpay. Lalabas na. It's the same with life. But you have to dig deep. Sabihin niyo sa katabi niyo, dig deep. And the third point of this passage is this. If it is well built, nothing will put it down. Nothing will put you down. No storm, no problem, no trial, no suffering, no earthquake will put you down. And this is the promise of Jesus. You have to be well built. Close your eyes and bow down your head. God is here. He brought you here because He is doing something great in your life. 
He is building a solid foundation in your life. Please allow Him. He is removing bad habits in your life. Allow Him. He is leading you away from bad relationships. Allow Him. Follow Him. Allow your God to build your life again. Say this prayer after me. Father in heaven, I allow you. Do what you please. Build in me a solid foundation. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. We praise you. We glorify your name. Glory, holy. Speak to your people, O oh God. As you sit down, please tell someone next to you, today is your day. This is not talk number two. This is a special talk. I would like you to watch the talk. Listen to the speaker. You will be blessed by him. You don't just listen to what he's going to tell you in financial life. Also get what you can uh, get from him that you can apply in your daily life. Okay? So kahit sinasabi niya about finances because our topic is overflow, listen to him and listen to the Lord speak to you. He is the MIF of Bo Sanchez. Alam niyo yung MIF? Ne? BFF, alam niyo? Best friends forever. Hindi siya yung BFF ni Bo. Siya ang MIF. Mentor, inspiration, and friend of Bo Sanchez. What you're going to watch is his talk last Sunday at PICC. And we shortened his talk just to get the gist of what he wants to say. After him, I'll come back and I'll give my, my short uh, inspirational message to you. But I would like you to listen. This is a powerful preaching that you are going to hear. Let us watch and be blessed by the MIF of Bo Sanchez, Dean Pax Lapid. Good morning, PICC! Good morning! I've divided the, the short talk on two things, and it has inspired me uh, for the word Truly rich, E R U L Y, and then R I C H. Uh, entrepreneurship is one of the avenues by which you can probably get substantial amounts of money. But even before that, there are only three ways to get substantial amount of money. You wanna know that, Dean? Please tell us. You win it. Kaya ang daming pumipila sa loto, di ba? Uh, pag nanalo sa loto, you marry the winner of the loto, siguro, di ba? Or you marry a rich man or a rich spouse, so you win it. You die for it, either through crime, magnanakaw ka ng bangko, that's not good. Or you probably uh, commit suicide pag sa insurance, so again, that's not good, di ba? Uh, or the other one is you cry for it. So you cry, no? Pag namatay na si Lolo, di ba? Uh, but giving you the inheritance, so you become miserably happy. Yeah. So win it, die for it, yeah, uh, and work for it. And work for it more is either you work for it all your life, such that you get your retirement fund after 20, 30 years. In my case. I got a good, hefty retirement fund working 22 years uh, for an oil company. The other one is you create it, which is enterprise. And in, uh, in the Truly Rich Club, we always, and, and that's part of the thing that I say, there are only three E's to prosperity or E's to prosperity. 
easy to prosperity or ease. Uh, I've got the acronym E E E. Uh, the first is estate, real estate. So you probably are uh, brokers and all of that. So you get or you probably develop it, like uh, our friend Randy, apartments and buildings. So uh, the other one is equities, the stock market. So if you're not able to have time for a business, you can own a paper business. And our brother Edward Lee, uh, chairman of CitySec Online, and I guess those that are with the Truly Rich Club, uh, has joined the, uh, to be subscribers for CitySec. Yeah? And the last, of course, is enterprise. Yeah? So let me take you through the, the five. The first is letter T of time and talent. The R is about recognizing the moment of opportunity. Imagine, all of us, we live in the same country, the Philippines. We all go to the malls. We all travel. We all do our daily ways of life. We see all the same things. But entrepreneurs find the opportunity. Yeah. Then you is understanding the business logic. I will, in a while, tell you a very nice point that I've adopted to make it easy on how to make your analysis. And then L is about luck, being prepared uh, with the opportunity. And the Y is why buy for me. So. Let's start. The secret of the masters really is your talent and your time. You don't need to look elsewhere. You first have to look within yourself. Yeah. Imagine when we were born, I wasn't born with a clicker or a presenter or Brother Bo was never born with a Mac, Mac or a computer beside him. All of us were born naked, but all of us were gifted by God with our talents and an equalizer of time. Each and every one of us, rich or poor, young or old, educated or not educated, we all have the same amount of time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks in a year. It's up to us to probably tap, recognize first, and tap our talent. The reason you're not able, so letter R tarion. The reason why you're not able to recognize opportunity is only one thing. Tamad! Tamad! Laziness in mind and act. You might think that tamad is only in action. No. Tamad happens first in mind and then in action. If you do well with the mind and the heart, you need not know, worry about the feet and the hands. It will just follow. In the book, I always say, dream big, believe in yourself, then you achieve. It's DBA. Dream, believe, and achieve. So if you're lazy or you're tamad, what do you do? All you do is tulog ng tulog, yeah? tambay ng tambay, and tunganga ng tunganga. Diba? Kaya, why is it there's a lot of tambays in, in a lot of the sari-sari corners or probably just probably making cuento when in fact there are a lot of seminars that are free. The go negotios, the TESDA, those are all free. Just coming to PICC, you get a lot of very, very valuable talks that would probably encourage you to jump into really what you want and purpose in life. The first D is direction. It's about goals and action together. Cannot be just goals. It has to be goals and action together. The most dominant way that we probably assess our goals is because of is time. I'd like to change that mindset. Don't use time as your measurement for your goals and action. It has to be a compass. Otherwise, kung time ka, you'll just be rushing to time. You'll be just like parabang doing the rat race over and over again. The more important thing, even you do it slowly, for as long as your measurement is your compass, your true north, your true direction in life, your true talents, then bit by bit, you will achieve it sooner or later. The other D is determination. The passion and the perseverance should always be there. Yeah? If you fail once, you try, you try, you try. 
And if you now have the direction and you now have the determination, it now becomes a destiny. So, T R U. U is understanding the business logic. I'll give you a simple way to really understand the business logic. Are you ready? It's an adaptation from Rudyard Kipling's Six Honest Men. And I was inspired when I was uh, authoring the book of Bon Negocio to put in a poem, analysis of the logics of a business. I said, I think of six honest probing men. They're who, what, why, how, where, and when. They have worked for me all the time in making my products a good mind. It doesn't end there. Business is always a success when products stand out above the rest. I thank my six honest probing men. They're who, what, why, how, where, and when. Bao ang talong. When you have a business idea, you ask who the customer is, what are the needs, or what are the gaps for that kind of category, why are they buying, how are they buying, where are they buying, and when are they buying? So, it's so easy to ask the six questions. So six questions give you six answers that gives you a napkin economics and a napkin plan. So T R U L is all about luck. Everything is lucky if you come prepared for the opportunity. And preparedness comes from either your background, comes from what you already know in your corporation, comes from your experience, and many, many more. So you don't have to grow a little. But of course, if the opportunity is there, and it gives you big opportunity, just like when I had my lettuce farm, uh, I got uh, a farm in Tagaytay. Uh, it's a uh, lettuce farm, kaya lettuce farm yun, no? There, I only have three plants there. Lettuce, lettuce, and lettuce. I'm not joking. So it's romaine lot, lettuce, it's palbala, full red lettuce, and it's lola bionda, the pearly lettuce. Why? All those three kinds of lettuce are all in your salad. And we deliver to Delhi France, KFC, Philippine Airlines, Singapore, but all through processors. But mind you, you come to agribusiness, the margins are great. For as long as you're able to sell high-valued crops, you get margins as much as maybe 70%. So again, being lucky is the offspring of preparedness and opportunity. So, unfortunately, not all gets to take advantage of the opportunity. Bakit kaya? Only one reason. Takot. Kanina tamad, ngayon takot. Eh pag tamad ka na, takot ka pa, eh wala ka na talaga, matulog ka na lang lagi. If you want business income, if you want bigger income, if you want bigger business income, you must come in. Halikta na, no? Di ba? So if you don't come in, so get out, so out of the classroom ka lang, di ba? Uh, and you need to have the passion and the desire to do it. Recently, uh, part of my dissertation is Batang Kalye, Batang Estudyante, Batang Negosyante. And I'm, I'm privileged that I'm working well with Joey Concepcion of Go Negosyo. We've recently launched NMBA, Negosyo Mo Bukas Ko. The concept, 18 to 25 years old of out-of-school youth will bring them back to high school, third and fourth year. We'll pay them a good salary of 400 with either pancakes, lots of pizza, and other partners of Go Negosyo. We'll split the 400. 200 goes to the to the food and the transport for the Batang Kalye. The other 200, we will invest that in a trust fund. Such that after two years, he does not only get a high school diploma, he also gets 100,000 to empower him to go to college or set up his own maliit na business. And that's a reality. But I had to present that. I didn't have the fear of failure of being rejected. Yeah? I proposed that for so many times to Joey. And finally, it got into his thick head. And he's now sponsoring that together with the other partners of Godi Bosch. Yeah? So if you want business income, you must come in. You must come in with time. 
talent and treasure. What if I don't have all the three? Normally, you won't have the treasure. But if you have less of the of the T, you have to put more on the other two T's. If you don't, if you have less of the treasure, you probably have to put more of your time and talent. If you got more of the treasure, then maybe you can buy talent. Yeah. An entrepreneur is somebody who creates products and services for the customer, creates jobs for others, creates more time for himself because he's got a business system. If you are shackled by your business, then you are not a businessman or entrepreneur. You're self-employed. You're both your employee and you're both yourself your own boss. Yeah. So a self-employed businessman is somebody who just lives within his own island. You have to extend that and balance it against your time, talent, and pressure. So you need to convert your time and talent for a winning product to get lots of treasure. T R U L and then why is why buy from me? It's not about price. It's not about price. I get a lot of uh, new ideas saying that Dean, my competitive advantage is I will sell it cheaper than the competition. I mean, the competition will just kill you. It just put the price even lower than you, a price competitive. Xiaomi base, ikaw wala, malulugi ka lang on your first salvo. The real hint on why people will buy from you is the air factor, ER. Ano yung air? Uh, air is longer, nicer, quicker, but not cheaper. From a customer, it has to be longer, nicer, longer, uh, uh, stronger, all the air, finer, di ba? From you as the producer, it has to be cheaper, meaning you can do it on a low-cost production or probably the end-to-end -end delivery, you become cheaper from your side of the business. So the air factor is the competitive advantage. A business idea is only a successful business opportunity if it's anchored on a product or service that adds value to a customer. That adds value is the air factor. I'll put it all together. If I'm uh, the truly secrets together into Pinay, P, again, I'll bring it back to your talents. Piliin ang hilig at gusto. It's your own personal preference. Piliin, ha? hindi pilitin. Piliin. Uh, I've interviewed a lot of uh, incoming freshmen uh, when I used to be dean of the Entrepreneur School of Asia. And as I give the form, uh, the application form to the incoming uh, uh, Entrep student, I ask him, Iho, bakit mo gustong maging negosyante? Ah, titingin ki mami. Kasi sabi ho ni mami, Mami, kayo po ang mag-fill up ng application form. <laughs> it has to be your personal preference, not your mom. Yeah? So, yung sunod natin is na. And this is the preparedness. Naaral, nagawa, nagaling. The aral may not be formal, it could be informal, it could be training, it could be exposure. Kaya dapat mahalin nyo yung inyong mga companies because you get free training from your corporate life. Yeah. After that, you turn that to your experience, to the nagawa. You nagawa many, many times and you become an expert. Malcolm Gladwell in Outlier says 10,000 hours to become an expert. Kaya si Bill Gates, the Beatles, and many, many more in that book. Very nice book. Yeah, 10,000 hours, if I were to convert that, 8 hours doing that same or that core competence every day will translate to 5 years. Kaya if you're doing the same thing 5 years, maybe it's time to look and make it profitable for your own business. And of course, the why buy from me of customer solution. When my young sons uh, were still growing up, Every time they would like to go to for some food, they would just put their hands like this. Sino yan? Sino? Akala ko kasi, bakit anak, may putok ka ba? O, what, 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 anong pinapaamoy mo sa aking kilikili? Di ba? So, dun lang, uh, people will only buy two things. Solution to a need or a problem and a good and happy feeling. The second part of the secrets is all about as important but to sustain. 
And that comes about having regular customers. Yeah. So business is not a one-time deal. It's not a one-time transaction. It's a long-run relationship. That brings me to the second part. You need to invest in relationships, especially if you're in business. And not relationships just in customers. It has to be your internal customers as well, which are your employees and your suppliers. So there are three-pronged relationships if you come to business. Suppliers, your partner network, and your employees. So you're not the only one running the company. So your employees also matter, and they also matter to your customers. Then cash. Business. Cash is happiness uh, is happiness is positive cash flow. Wag po kayong matakot sa mathematics, but you need to understand debit credit equals profit. Kung hindi niyo maintindihan, debit credit becomes stupid. And finally, the letter H is anything that you think, anything that you want to do, it is all his plan and will for us. Good morning, PICC! Did you learn something there? Yes. Tingnan nyo nga yung kaibigan nyo sa tabi nyo. Kung kaibigan nyo lang, ha? Sabihin nyo sa kanya, malapit ka ng umaman. Naniniwala ba kayo na ang pera ay hindi masama? Kasi kung masama ang pera, dapat wala kayong pera kasi mabubuti kayong tao. Kaya money will be given to those people who are generous at yun ang gusto ng Panginoon. Now let me go to my sharing, to my talk. The first step to an overflowing life. Who wants here to overflow? Sige nga, yan. mag-uumapaw ang kanyang buhay. Sa lahat ng aspeto, ha? We're not just talking about finances, we're talking about everything in your life. The first step to an overflow is for you to come thirsty. Sabihin nyo nga, come thirsty. Sabihin nyo nga sa kaibigan nyo, come thirsty. Dapat ikaw ay lumapit sa Diyos ng ano, na ikaw ay uhaw na uhaw. John 7.37 says, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. If you are thirsty, you look for different ways for you to quench your thirst. Ito lang, yung iba, hinahanap ito sa ibang paraan. Bakit? Kasi tayong lahat may uhaw sa ating buhay. A life lacking spiritual water has a dehydrated heart. Sabi nyo nga, dehydrated heart. Ito, I would like you to look at yourself, ha? not your seatmates. Ha? Isipin nyo, tingnan nyo ang buhay nyo. A dehydrated, minsan kasi you don't know you're dehydrated. Alam nyo ba bakit sa summer, lalo na sa, sa province namin sa New York, Uh, maraming biglang namamatay kasi hindi nila alam dehydrated sila. Hindi nila alam. Kaya if you have a dehydrated life, you don't a heart, you don't know that you're dehydrated. But let me tell you this, for you to know you have a dehydrated life, ito yung mga nangyayari sa inyo. Your tempers, your, your temper flares, ang dali mong, yung konting ano lang, ah, incredible hole ka na, yung nagbabagong anyo ka. Bakit? Nadampian ka lang. Wah! Yan yung dehydrated ang puso mo. Ano pa? You are overcome with your worry. Ang dali mong talunin ng pag-aalala. Yung umuulan lang. Umuulan. Wala na. Pagising mo ng umaga, Hoy, grabe! Tumarap ka sa salamin. Ah, ba't may pimple ako? Imagine kung ako ganun, di araw-araw ako. Araw-araw ko, ano lang tumutubo sa mukha ko. Parang binata pa ako ngayon. No, yung pimple ko, may nag-a-apply pang isang pimple sa harap. If you are overcome by your worries, you have a dehydrated heart. Another is guilt. Sabi niyo nga, guilt. guilt. Yung may mali kang ginawa, sobrang guilty. Yung talagang, wala na ako pag-asa talaga. Wala na. Inuntog mo yung sarili mo sa pati, wala na talaga. Guilt. What else? 
fear. fear. You're so afraid. Tumaas lang ang gasolina, wala ng pag-asa. Pataas na ng pataas ang bilihin, pati ang sardinas, gusto nilang itaas. Sardi, yung ganoon, takot na takot ka na. Pupunta ka sa madilim na lugar, nakakatakot dito, kaya hindi ka nakalod ng sine. <laughs> madilim kasi doon. Fear is a sign, is a result of a dehydrated heart. Another is hopelessness, wala ng pag-asa. Sulyapan nyo nga yung mga katabi nyo. Mukha bang may pag-asa pa? Mukha naman, di ba? Kaya kahit ikaw ay dalaga na at may edad na, may pag-asa ka pa. Tingnan nyo yung katabi nyo dalaga, sabihin nyo, may pag-asa ka pa. Yung iba, umasa ka pa. Hindi <laughs> yun, may pag-asa ka pa. Another sign of dehydrated life is sleeplessness. Hindi ka makatulog. Ihiga ka, pipikit mo mata mo, tapos bigla kang didilat. Bakit? Hindi ako makatulog. You have a dehydrated life, heart. Another is loneliness. Ang lungkot mo. Bakit? Maybe because something happened to you in the past. Baka naiwan ka ng boyfriend mo, kaya lahat na makita mo may holding hand. Buti pa sila. Ayaw ka na nala. Buti pa sila. Loneliness. Another is resentment. Ang dali mo mag-resent. Yeah. Grabe. Irritable. Yan. Yan. Irritable. Yung, yung ang dali. Ang simpleng bagay. Ano? May nagtatanong lang, saan po papunta rito? Hindi ko alam. Di ba? Irritable. Nakapila ka ng mahaba, galit na galit ka. Hakainis. Habama ng pila. Ang dali mo magalit. Tinutulak mo yung mga katabi mo. Uy, oh, sorry. Hindi ako. Tinulak din ako. Irritable. Why? You have a dehydrated heart. And last is you're insecure. You are insecure. Ang ganda-ganda mo. May dumating na isang maganda rin kasi ang ganda mo rin. Insecure ka. Ang ganda ng bag mo, may dumating, may dalang bag, buti pa siya may bag. Namili ka, nag-shopping ka, ang bigat ang dala mo kasi bawal plastic dito, nakakita ka may dalang plastic, buti pa siya may plastic. <laughs> Napaka-insecure. Ang liit na bagay. You have a dehydrated heart. And my prayer for you is to come to Jesus and let Jesus quench your thirst. You have to drink. Jesus says, come and drink. Ako po, I'm, I'm privileged to go to different countries doing mission trips. Pagka nasa eroplano po, madalas ako mauhaw. So, inom ako ng inom. Tapos, pagka nahihiya na ako tawagin yung mga stewards, to, yung mga flight attendants, na ano na ako? Yung uhaw na uhaw ako. Pag baba ko ng eroplano, ito may isang country, I won't mention the country para you experience it when you go there. Pagdating ko doon, naghanap ako nung, alam niyo yung, anong tawag doon? Yung, yung may tubig? What do you call that? Fountain. Oh. Kasi ang fountain sa Pilipinas, yung gano'n, oh, fountain. <laughs> no, gano. Water, fountain. Yan, yung Pilipin doon. So, lapit ako. Kasi alam mo, water fountain talaga eh. Kasi kitang-kita mo talaga eh. So, lapit akong ganyan. Tapos, tinignan ko, paano to? Hindi ko alam. Pinindot ko rito, wala namang pipindutin. So, wala. Ay, lumabas. Tapos yung iba, yung, yung, alam mo yun? Alam mo yun? Yung tinutuhod. Pag tuhod mo, lalabas. So, ako, wala naman matuhod. No? So, ako talaga, hindi ko alam. Anong gagawin ko? Eh, uhaw na uhaw na ako. So, gusto ko sana pukpukin eh, para lumabas eh, no? O, Pinoy na Pinoy. Yeah! O, kaya, ano ko, adukin! Ganun, ano? Ayaw. Ayaw eh. Ay, paano kaya ito? So, ginawa ko, tumabi lang ako konti, tabi akong ganyan, kunyari, nagbabasa, pero tiniting na ako kung sino umiinom. <laughs> tapos may dumating, natakpan, tapos gumanon siya, lumabas tubig, pag alis niya, ay, ko, paano yun? Ay, paano to? Hindi ka talaga nakita. So, ang ginawa ko, sige, dito na ako tumabi. Tapos ayan yung tubig, kunyari, wala namang nakasulat, pader lang, ganyan, no? Silabas ko sa cellphone ko, kunyari, nagtitext ako. But I was observing what will happen. Tapos may dumating na lalaki. Alam niyo ginawa niya? Wala siyang hinawakan. Taga doon siya eh, sa country na yun. Nag-bend. Pag-bend niya, lumabas tubig. It was censored. 
sensor sensitive siya. So gaganon mo lang. So yung umalis na siya, that's it. I have to do this. Guma niya lang ako. Ah. Oh, sarap ako. Wow, wow, wow. Naglaro-laro na ako doon. The, the Lord says, come to me. But you cannot just go to Him. Hindi ka pwedeng lumapit. You have to drink. You have to bend and drink. And when I did that, my thirst was quenched. Brothers and sisters, come to the Lord and He will quench your thirst. Huwag nyo nang hanapin sa iba. Hindi ka talaga kayo. You will never be satisfied by anything else. Yung iba, uhaw na uhaw sa buhay, alam na ang gulo ng buhay, alam mo kung saan nahanapin? Kung sa entertainment. May problema, Diga, maglibang tayo. Kung ano-ano, pag uwi, problema pa rin. Mag-inuman, problema pa rin. Yung iba, talagang hinahanap, may hinahanap ang Diyos lamang. That is why you have to come thirsty when you come to the Lord. And then when you come to Him, please drink. Drink. There is a story about a rich Englishman who lived in Cairo. And he got lost in the desert. Naligaw. Nagahunting siya, no, saligaw siya. And for many days, wala na siyang tubig, wala na, patay na, mamamatay, matay na siya. He was rescued by an Arab chief in Arabia, in the desert. When he was rescued, he was brought to their place and he was treated with kindness and royalty by this Arab chief. Tapos this Englishman said, I will repay you. Sabi niya, I'll bring you to my city in Cairo. After a few weeks, dumating itong mga Itong Arab king with, with some uh, entourage. May mga ilang lalaki, mga bodyguards, mga ganyan. Arab king sa, sa desert, dumating sa Cairo. And the Englishman brought them to the finest hotel, the five-star, six-star hotel in Cairo. Tapos sabi sa kanya, tomorrow I'll come back and I will bring you around Cairo for you to see the nice view here. The, 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 the phoenix, the, the Sphinx, sorry, the Sphinx, the Pyramid, ipapasyal ko kayo. Sure. Tapos, tumira na yung mga, mga, yung Arab chief and the entourage. The next day, the Englishman went to the hotel, to the room. He was knocking on the door. No one was answering. And then he tried to open it. And the door opened. Tapos pumasok siya. Hinahanap niya yung mga tao. Ito mga taga-desert. Alam niyo kung saan niya nakita? Ito mga lalaki with the Arab chief. Nakita niya sa, sa bathroom. Yung tubig na nasa gripo, pinaglalaroan nila. Woohoo! Imagine mga lalaki. Ay, mga ganun, ah. Ay, ganyan. Naglalaro. And then the Englishman said, Friends, it's, it's time for us to see the great sights of Cairo. The pyramid, the, the sphinx, the ganyan, etc. And the chief answered, Sir, we're not interested in all those sights. We're not as you know, we come from Arabia. We come from the desert where water is scarce as gold. But here, you can turn on this valve and we get all the water we want. And as far as we are concerned, this is the greatest sight in Cairo. Nahala silang pakailam sa ganda. Bakit? Ito yung pinakakailangan namin tubig. And the, the Englishman allowed them to play. And then afterwards, special pa rin sila. And on the last day of their trip, the Englishman went back to the hotel, knocked on the door. Wala na naman nagbubukas. But he heard some noise inside. So he opened the door, tapos pinun- alam niya kung saan pupuntahan. Sa bathroom. Alam niyo, pagdating niya, nagulat itong Englishman. Kasi yung mga Arabs, may hawak na axe. Yung isa, pinupukpuk na yung pader ng siyar. Huh? Yung iba kinukuha yung, yung, yung pipe, inaalis talaga. And, and the Englishman said, ah, excuse me, uh, stop what you're doing. You're destroying hotel property. And the Arab chief said, please don't be angry with us. We are returning to Arabia, to our place, and you know that water is scarce in our country. We want to take this water faucet with us. <laughs> so we will have all the water we want. Brothers and sisters, you might have all the money in the world. You might have all the pleasures in life in a snap of a finger. You can get them. You 
might have a big house or a fancy car like me, <laughs> you might be very popular. You might be very influential. But my dear friends, without Jesus, who is the source of life, you will never be satisfied. You will always be thirsty. So come to Him. Come to Jesus and drink. Let's all stand, brothers and sisters. Come to Him in prayer. We are going to sing a very old song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But as we sing this song, I would like you to just surrender to God. Come to Him thirsty. Lift up your hands like this and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come thirsty. I come to drink. I'm turning my life over to you. I'm going to drink deeply of the living water of life. Brothers and sisters, sing this song with us. Very old song. Some of you might know this, but this is a song asking God, Lord, fill us to overflowing. As the deer has the the water so my soul longing after
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, we receive, oh God, your blessing. We receive your peace. We receive your joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Holy is your name. God is touching you now. God is filling you now to overflow. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. Oh, receive it, my dear friend. Receive what you need from your God. answered prayers, answered dreams. We desire you, O God, because nothing will satisfy us that even our answered prayers, that even our dreams fulfilled, only you will satisfy. So we come to you thirsty, O God. Fill us today to overflow. Thank you, Jesus. Holy is your Glorify us. Receive God's peace, brothers and sisters. Receive God's joy. Receive God's love. Receive God's blessings today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Oh, There was a little boy, he went with his dad in a store. While the dad was buying things, the little boy went to the counter and he saw jars of candies. Maganito. Tapos yung little boy tumingin sa candy. Sabi nung store owner, kid, you, you wanna get? Go get a handful of candies. Kuha ka? A handful. So isang dakot. Kuha ka, binuksan. Naabot sa kanya. Go, go get. The little boy just looked at the candies and looked at the store owner with smile on his face. And, and the store owner, go get, go get. Yung dati pinalunood, sabi niya, ito, ito, kuha ka, kuha ka. Get a handful. Tapos yung little boy just looked, smiled, looked at the store owner, and looked at the candies, and just smiled. And yun, what the store owner did, the store owner did this. And gave, and gave this to him. The little boy got everything, put this inside his pocket, and smiled and said, Thank you, sir. And then he ran away. He ran to his dad. And while going home, the dad asked, the boy why why did you not get the candies of your own but hinintay mo pa yung store owner ang kumuha at ibigay sa iyo the boy said daddy the store owner's hand 
was a lot bigger than mine. Brothers and sisters, God's hand is bigger than yours. You just need to receive what God will give you. And God doesn't want to give you just a little of His blessings. Just a little of His life, no. God wants to overflow you with love, joy, and peace. His hand is bigger than yours. And He doesn't give like this. Yung ganito, tapos bibigay sa'yo. No, this is how God gives to overflowing. He gives like this to overflow. Yeah. God gives to overflow. Hallelujah. Mamaya na to. May second and third session pa tayo. Believe that, my dear friends, God is so generous. He wants to give you many things. Pero gusto niya, hindi konti, gusto niya nag-uumapaw. I would like you to expect that, have that faith as you go home, and receive God's overflowing love, mercy, and joy, and peace in your life today. Amen! Can you have someone next to you tell that person, receive God's blessings? Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh.